That's definitely smelling like a trap to me, isn't it? It's midday and this music's still creeping me out of it. No one's coming to help us. It's a trap. Wait a minute. Something's not right. Desperate, I grabbed her by the arm. But the bell's ringing, listen! That much was true. Over and over, the chime kept ringing. Almighty Father, we humbly beseech thee! Almighty Father, we humbly beseech thee! Almighty Father, we humbly beseech thee! Maybe Debbie thought it was God ringing the bell, because he ra she raised her voice so high that she was nearly shouting now. Her hair whipped back and forth as her chanting became increasingly intense. I felt cold chills running down my spine. It could be Bobby out there, you know, I shouted at Tiffany, irritated. Why would he do that? How should I know? I was confused. I no longer even knew what I was saying. I know. Maybe he's trying to lure us out. No. Maybe the wind just blew on something and it's hitting against the button. I had no idea whether such a thing was even possible. At that point, I was just yelling out anything that crossed my mind. I don't believe you. What if it really is someone here to help us and he just gives up? Tiffany screamed at me and shook her arm free with ferocious strength. I've had enough. I'm not staying locked up here for another second. Before I could stop her, she flung the door open and dashed out. I had an agonizing choice to make. Should I go after her? Or should I stay and protect the others? Well, if they keep the door locked, they might be okay. I don't know. They actually have the forest key. Maybe they won't be. I just can't let her go out there alone. Sorry, Grace. Grace, don't let anyone in until I come back. I picked up the mop handle and ran after Tiffany. She was already out of sight. Listening closely, I noticed the chime was no longer ringing. Quickly, I ran to the front entrance. Tiffany was standing frozen in front of the entrance. Directly in front of her, I could see the glass in the outer door had been broken, and a hand, frozen in place, was reaching for the doorknob. It looked like whoever it was had been trying to unlock it. I inched forward towards the door, my hands gripping the mop handle so hard it hurt. Wind and snow were pouring from the broken glass into the entryway and piling up on the floor. The hand sticking through the outer door was covered in blood. Reaching out carefully, I prodded it with the mop handle. It just sat there, unmoving, like some kind of Halloween prank. I didn't know who it was, but it looked like we had another corpse on our hands. Taking a dead body in stride like that. I didn't even recognize myself anymore. Slowly I reached out, unlocked the door and pushed it open. The outside of the inn was completely obscured by the furiously blowing wind. As I opened the door, the mutilated corpse resting on it slowly crumpled backwards set facing up. Those wide open eyes set in a face smeared with blood and snow. There was no doubt about it. Bobby? My hushed whisper was drowned out by the roar of the wind. But why? What was Bobby doing out there? For a moment, I skipped the page. For a moment, I just stood there in shock. Suddenly, a powerful gust of wind hit me, so I hurriedly slammed the door shut and turned around. Tiffany was slumped down on the floor whimpering, Save us! Save us! Save us! It was hard to believe that she could have killed Bobby in the short time it took me to catch up to her. So who could have done it? I had no idea. But whoever it was attacked Bobby when he was outside. Did that mean some mysterious person was behind all the murders after all? Someone that could move freely, in and out of every room of the inn without being seen. Someone who could kill at will. Was that demonic killer lurking silently in the storm waiting for his next victim? Everyone's going to die. Those chilling words made my blood run cold. Tiffany was still muttering to herself and staring blankly into space. Everyone's going to die. Everyone's going to die. No one is going to save us. I wanted to deny it, to shout back that she was being ridiculous, but I couldn't. Maybe our fate was inescapable. Maybe we were all going to die. Me, and yes, Grace too. I didn't know what to do. How could I possibly defend against a demonic, against a demon that was capable of this, this slaughter? For the first time since I was a child, I felt like praying to God. Christian, Jewish, Muslim, I didn't care. Someone, somewhere, please, if you can save us from this monster, I'll do anything, I thought. Just send me a sign. Max, Max, what happened? Grace, 
Suddenly I heard her voice and looked up. Grace, why did you come out? It's too dangerous. I, I was worried about you. We came together and fell into each other's arms. There was no hesitation, no embarrassment. Having gone beyond the limits of fear and despair, we both desperately needed comfort, if only for a brief moment. D did something happen? Grace asked. I explained what I found at the door. Bobby, but how could that be? I don't know. He was covered in blood. Someone must have attacked him out there. Oh my god, but who? Who else is there? There's almost no one left. She was near hysterical now, the fear pouring off her in waves. Maybe he tried to run away, and was attacked by a bear. A bear? Did he look like he was? I'm not sure. I really didn't look. Go find out. This is important. She was right, but the truth is that I didn't want to know. If it turned out that the wounds were man-made... Well, I didn't want to face the implications of that. But I couldn't just ignore them either. I forced myself to go back into the entrance and step into the accumulating snow. Bobby lay there on his back, a thin layer of snow already settling over him. I reached out, and gently brushed the snow from his face. A clump of snow stuck to his forehead, stained bright red. It looked like massive amounts of blood had poured from a wound somewhere there. Holding back the urge to vomit, I pushed aside the bloody snow to reveal the terrible wound underneath. His forehead and the area around his hairline had been horribly crushed, as if smashed repeatedly with some kind of heavy object. I was no forensics expert, so that was all I could tell. I don't think it was a bear, but he could have fallen from somewhere and hit his head. He wasn't necessarily murdered. I hurried back inside and, God forgive me, I lied to Grace. I just didn't want to admit what I knew was the truth. That the killer was still very much, uh, very much at work. I mean, as if it couldn't get any worse, right? Just then, a sudden scream pierced the silence. It was sharp, like a dagger and full of terror. <laughs> no. I, I can't take any more. Please, just stop already. All the strength drained from my legs, and I thought I would collapse. My heart felt smothered in anguish, drowning in despair. Without thinking, Grace and I reached out and held each other's hands tight. We're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. Tiffany laid on the floor, deaf to what was happening, repeating the same phrase tonelessly over and over again. I wanted to hit her until she shut up. I won't die that easily. Ignoring Tiffany, Grace and I climbed the stairs. I still had my mop handle gripped firmly in my right hand. Before we reached the top, we noticed a body lay on the floor. Was it Molly or Debbie or... 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 It was Amber, Mr. Buchanan's wife. Was she the one who screamed? Strangely, I felt nothing when I saw her body lying there. My mind was so overwhelmed with shock and despair that nothing could penetrate it. I was numbed, hardened, deadened. Forgetting all caution, I went straight to where she lay. Amber? No response. Grace squeezed my arm so hard it hurt. The blood. Amber lay on her back. A red puddle was spreading out in a pool under her head. I knelt beside her body and felt for a pulse. Just as I thought, she was dead. Her eyes stared out, glassily, frozen in a look of surprise. The killer must still be inside, Grace gasped, a look of panic on her face. I was beyond confused. How could he have killed Bobby outside and then climbed to the second floor without us seeing him? He couldn't have taken the stairs. What were Debbie and Molly doing, I wondered. At that moment it hit me. The three girls terrified by the murder note, the ones acting most afraid of the killer, hiding together in their room. What if... What if they were all involved in the murders together? A shock ran through my body, as if I touched a live wire. If the three of them had been working together, it explained all sorts of things. Cutting up a body so quickly, being able to maintain the alibi that they were all in the room together, and finally waiting until Grace was gone from the room before murdering Amber. I just realized, with Amber and Bobby dead, and Bobby just before, Grace and I were the only innocent survivors left. I was in a complete panic. The three girls were going to come and kill us. For some reason, that image was ten times more frightening than when I thought Bobby had done everything. I stood up and looked around for somewhere to run. 
My room was the only real choice. Pulling Grace by her arm, we ran back to my room. My hands trembled as we finally managed to lock the door. What is it? Shouldn't we go check on the girls? Grace asked with a puzzled expression. Are you stupid? Don't you get it yet? Other than you and me, they're the only ones left. It took a few seconds for my words to finally sink in. But wait, this has to be wrong. Those girls couldn't do that. So you believe someone besides us has been sneaking in and out like a ghost without being seen? Is that it? I took out all my fear and confusion on her. But, but, but I, I, I can't, I, I can't believe it either, but there's no other possibility. The sounds of footsteps coming slowly up the stairs reached our ears. It must be Tiffany, I thought. Since I was no longer there to see, she'd given up on her crying performance and was coming to kill us. Suddenly I heard a stifled scream, followed by the sound of running. She must have made it to the second floor. Grace and I stood by the door and listened, trying not to make a sound. We couldn't hear a thing. What are we going to do now? Grace whispered anxiously. I just shook my head without saying a word. Of course I didn't know. My rational brain said that they were just young women, and I shouldn't be so frightened. But my instincts were sending different signals altogether. Anyone would be terrified after seeing such a gruesome parade of corpses. That wasn't the work of normal human beings. What kind of person... No. What kind of monsters could do that? It boggled my mind, and I was left reeling in shock. I could understand that a single man, out of his mind with grief and hell-bent on revenge. But what could possibly cause these seemingly normal ladies to go on a murderous rampage? The sheer impossibility of it was what made it so deeply disturbing. But we don't know for sure that all three were involved, right? Asked Grace. What do you mean? I, I just can't believe it. You saw Tiffany. Are you saying she was just acting? Maybe she didn't know anything. She had to. They said they were together the whole time. If any of them were involved, all three were. But even as I said that, I had to admit that I didn't think all of their behavior was an act. I'm going to go take a look, Grace said as she made to leave the room. Hey, wait, what are you thinking? You can't go out there. I don't want to see any more people die. I just can't stand by and let that happen. I felt the same way. That's why I tried to do everything I could up to this point. But I'd sworn to myself that I was going to save Grace at all costs. Even if all three girls had been innocent, I still wouldn't have wanted to put Grace's life in danger to save them. Don't try to stop me, Grace pushed me aside and tried to open the door. Okay, fine. I'll go. Just promise me that you'll stay here. No matter how long I'm gone, I want you to promise to stay right here. I didn't want Grace to come looking for me like she did before. I could see that she was struggling to come to a decision, but finally... Okay, I promise. But I want you to hurry and come right... come right away, also. What? Please be careful. Of course. I grabbed the mop handle once again, and opened the door. After checking that there was no one in the hallway, other than Amber with her head resting in a puddle of sticky blood that is, I slipped outside. I nodded to Grace and she closed the door. Then I heard the sound of her pressing the block button. Trying my best to, mu to muffle my footsteps, I tiptoed down the stairs and made my way towards the girls' room. They were just normal girls, I told myself, but my heart was pounding like a hammer and my mouth had gone dry. I stopped and quietly put my ear to the door. I could hear the sound of someone crying inside. Was Grace right? Did they have nothing to do with it? But for that to be true would have to be some kind of demonic monster like Jason or Freddy running around, killing people and dis then disappearing. I honestly wasn't sure what idea was more frightening. Silently, I put my hand on the doorknob and turned. It wasn't locked. Tiffany must have been so upset that she forgot. I opened the door and peeked in. Just at that moment, I heard an eerie scream. Hair wild and disheveled, and wielding a ski pole, Tiffany suddenly rushed at me. I took a quick step back, but felt a sudden sharp pain in my right shoulder. The ski pole had gone right through my shirt, oh, sorry, and pierced deep into the muscle. When she pulled it out, it was covered in blood. But what horrified me and frightened me the most wasn't the bloody ski pole, or even the wound in my shoulder. It was her twisted and deranged face. 
fueled by fear, I struck the mop handle wildly. It struck her hard in the forehead, and the shock from the impact traveled up my arm. It slowed her down only for a moment before she recovered and then, with an ear-piercing scream, stabbed the ski pole straight at my face. I jumped backwards and the tip missed me by inches. Tiffany, did you kill- I didn't have time to finish the sentence before she charged at me again. I made to back away again, but she'd already pressed me up against the wall. Without thinking, I blocked the thrust with my left hand. Ugh. A silent cry rose in my throat. My palm felt like it was on fire. Blood dripped down my wrist. This is it. I'm going to die. With my left hand still impaled on the tip of the ski pole, I brought the mop handle in my right hand down on Hif Tiffany's head with all the strength I could muster. Once, twice, three times. There was a nasty crunching sound as her skull gave way, and each time I hit her, her face seemed to warp and distort like a ball of clay dropped off a table. Suddenly, I was showered with a bright gush of blood that exploded from her face. Slowly she collapsed, doubling over on her knees. For about ten seconds I watched, blank and numb, as her body twitched. Time seemed to slow to an eternity as I realized I had killed a woman with my own hands. What have I done? But then I remembered the other two and quickly spurred into action. Why hadn't they come to help her? Against all three, I wouldn't have stood a chance. Carefully moving around Tiffany's body, I opened the door all the way and stepped inside. I think part of me already expected the bloody scene laid out before me. Debbie and Molly lay on the beds. Both were bleeding from their heads. Like Amber, their skulls had been crushed by something heavy. Did Tiffany kill everyone? Now that I thought of it, that was impossible. She had gone to the front door before us and gone upstairs after us. Not only couldn't she have killed the two girls, but she couldn't have killed Amber either. Besides, she had been holding a ski pole. She could have stabbed people with it, but there was no way to beat someone to death over the head with it. I looked around, but I didn't see anything else that looked like a weapon. So who killed Amber? Was it someone we didn't know after all? Were they hiding in here somewhere? If that's not, then... I sensed something behind me and turned around. Grace. Grace was standing in the hallway, holding a bloody ski pole. Murderer! Her face twisted with loathing. Grace lunged at me. It was so unexpected that I couldn't even move. Suddenly my throat was on fire, searing pain, wetness spreading out on my chest. I put my hand to my throat and realized it was blood. The ski pole was lodged deeply, so I pulled it out. The blood-stained pole clattered to the ground. Grace backed away, staring at me with utter revulsion. Grace! I tried to cry out to her, but only a wet gurgling sound came out of the hole in my throat. Grace, was it you? Did you kill all those people? After I went to the front door, did you kill Amber and Molly and Debbie? No, it couldn't be. You were with me when I heard Amber scream. Not you, Grace. Not you. Please say it's not you, Grace. She was scowling at me, her face a mask of fear and loathing. The ground rushing up at me. All I see in front of me is red. The red blood gushing endlessly from my throat. My final thought was, what will Grace do now that she's the only one left? All alone in the field of the dead. I felt sad for her. Grace. Done in by Grace. Unfortunately, you were unable to solve the crime. Story changes greatly depending on your choices. Read carefully and try to find out the truth. So, there's our ending. Not exactly the, uh, the best of endings, but I believe that's probably one of the better first ones to take. It gets us through the story, and you see what happens, basically, at the end of it all. Kind of reminds me a little bit of how, uh, well, actually, now that I'm remembering, I'm not supposed to do spoilers. But it reminds me a little bit of, uh, 999, and that's as far as I'm gonna go. Um, but, that's into that route. Now, what we're gonna do, so, the problem with this game here, let me do this for you. If I double tap the screen, um, I get this flow chart thing. That isn't really a true flow chart, it's more like a route chart. It shows you um, chapters from your route. However, it isn't a full flow chart. Like, I can't jump to another point within the chart, which is a little unfortunate. Um, so I'm not quite sure where we want to start. If anybody, well, we might, uh, I'll think about it a bit in between uh, the next time we make an episode, but we're going to start at some point along this route, probably. 
and go for some other stuff. Uh, I'll have to think about it a bit, because I don't really know how exactly I want to do this. I kind of jumped into this without a real clear plan in my head. But, one thing I'd like to do really quick is, uh, let's return to the title screen. Now, uh, if you're, if you're only interested in the story, you don't really care too much about music or about the history of the game, feel free to end now, this is the end of the video. But I thought I'd show you guys a little bit of music. It's kind of cool. So this is the main track of the song. Take a second to listen to it if you would. Now, it's really nice because it's really spooky and stuff. It does a pretty good job of setting the mood. And it also plays uh, during when they're talking about the Banshee in the story. The, uh, the mythical Banshee. That they're like, well, could a Banshee cut through someone's skin? You know, they could probably have broken the glass, maybe. You know, said Banshee was real. Now, this is the, uh, the newer version. I don't... I can't honestly tell you if the music was updated at any point during any of the other ports other than this iPhone version, because I haven't played them because I don't understand Japanese, unfortunately. However, I can show you what this track was on the original Super Famicom version. Arguably creepier, but I'm going to splice it in right now. What do you guys think? I think, I honestly think that version is a little bit creepier, I really do. Now, keep in mind, they were obviously limited by instruments, so that's why it sounds like that. This new version is made off of that version. But man, I mean, is that original version not, like, majorly creepy? I think so. Uh, as we go on, I may do more of these type of things. Let me know what you guys think, if you like kind of background information. It's kind of stuff I'm gleaning from scouring the internet and stuff. But, that was the end of this route, and uh, next time, we'll start from elsewhere. I'll, uh, I'll thoroughly explain where we're starting at so you guys have a bit of a better idea. I really wish this game did go with a flowchart. It would be a lot easier to navigate, but we can still do it regardless. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!